How's it going everybody? Thank you so much for tuning into this video and it's about time we get back to some 6.5 stuff. I can hear some of you guys, uh, not necessarily in the comments, but I, I understand that most of y'all came over for 6.5 content in the beginning and then I started doing warrior stuff, <laughs> but today it's, it's time to get back on the 6.5 topic. So, today we'll be going over, you know, a topic that I've kind of discussed before but you know it it's come up in recent days that a lot of you have asked me hey I, I just put a manual wastegate on my pickup and it runs fine right up until I get into higher tur uh, boost pressures and it seems like it falls on its face completely afterwards I'll have to shut my truck off reset it stuff like that or you know how do I know if my turbo is bad what to check for stuff like that so today we'll be going over manual wastegates we'll be going over uh, more or less D rate on the 6.5 and how to check your turbo to make sure it's good or not also preventative things we can do for our turbo so let's get into it so it is extremely apparent that the 6.5 in factory configuration is really low on power with the turbo if you have one because some 6.5s were equipped with non-turbo at least the earlier years of 6.5 were equipped with non-turbo of course today we're going over the turbo ones but it is obnoxiously apparent that the 6.5 even being a turbo diesel is incredibly underpowered it, it, it pulls good it pulls great but when you just hammer on the throttle it seems like that's all it's really got and a lot of the times it's because it's only putting out about eight pounds of boost uh, anywhere from five to eight depending on which years you have and what what that uh vacuum cell noise is allowing your turbo to open to but it is it's frustrating i completely understand that most six five owners you know don't want to just keep it stock they want to get a little bit more out of their 6.5 and there are a couple good ways to do so just by adding air one thing to do would be to go with a manual wastegate i'll show you that here now. if you see on this factory i believe this is a gm3 turbo you have your uh, diaphragm housing that when you put a vacuum on this oh, I'm sorry on this fitting uh, from the vacuum pump it will keep this rod closed in until it reaches a certain point that the vacuum pump can no longer allow for vacuum and then it'll push this rod will eventually come out due to the exhaust pressure pushing on this little blow-off valve if you will and what when that rod or the pressure from the exhaust builds up it's going to progressively open this little valve back here and all that vacuum pump is trying to do is keep this rod pulled in so you're allowed to make boost it's only going to make so much boost in the factory configuration like I said it's about anywhere from five to eight pounds of boost the 6.5 can definitely take more than that and a very common thing to do is to put a manual wastegate on it. In Siri here I kind of made this one up for myself uh, after I deleted the vacuum pump. All it is is just the base housing and then you would essentially grind this down and keep the rod you would then thread the other end of this rod inside here and then you are able to put a spring on the very bottom of it and then a washer and then a nut. I used a second nut in order to lock this nut in place. Now it's okay to increase the, the uh, boost on these 6.5s. They can take it. However, finding that limit <laughs> is little to be desired 
So a couple of things that I run into talking with you guys, and if, if you're new to the channel and if you don't know, I say it at the end of every video, if you have questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comments below or get a hold of me directly through my social media uh, sites via Facebook, Instagram, so on and so forth. I do my best to respond to absolutely everybody. Uh, just keep in mind, I'm kind of busy, uh, and but I will eventually respond to you if you are willing to take the time to wait for a bit or if uh you know if I just happen to get to you uh when I do then I have absolutely no problem helping anybody with their six fives but the amount of boost you throw to these things kind of depends on a few um things to consider one thing to consider would be is your six five head studded Another thing to consider is, do you have factory tuning? Or do you have uh, something to fool the ECU in order to tell the computer that it's reading proper boosts and you don't throw it into limp mode? So let's get on topic of throwing, actually getting down to throwing more boosts to these trucks. If you're going to keep it in factory configuration, meaning no head studs, no tune, or anything like that, and not fool with anything electrical or anything to try and fool the ECU into thinking that it's reading proper boost and you're not over boosting it, um, about 10 PSI is what I found to be right around the max of what you can throw to a stock system and not cause any DRE issues or any problems. The issues that you'll run into in factory configuration will be um, the truck sees that it's over boosting, it's thinking there's something wrong with the turbo or the blow off valve or the vacuum pump and it's just allowing it to over boost. Um, my wife's truck actually does that and we can't run it over 10, 11 pounds of boost with it throwing a check engine light and throwing it into a limp mode. It will decrease the power or overall output of the engine. It is incredibly frustrating, uh, especially when you know, you're pulling a trailer and you need just that little bit of extra <laughs> and the check engine light comes on and it <laughs> throws it in more or less limp mode. So a couple things to uh, run into there would be to just set it at 10 PSI max and run it or get a tuned ECU. Uh, typically in my pickup I use Quadstar ECU. That's basically your computer for the truck. Uh, or there's this uh, Banks module that messes with the mass airflow sensor. You can kind of fool the mass airflow sensor or the mass air pressure sensor in order to read the proper uh, boost without fooling with the ECU. I'll try to leave that link in the description of that little uh, fooler, if you will, from Banks if I can find it. Uh, that way, you know, you guys are able to do this if you so want. So that just about sums it up for the factory configuration. Now say you've gone a step further, further or your truck actually allows you to run more boost without fooling the uh, mass airflow sensor or the ECU. I have seen that before and my actually my old black 6.5, I used to run 18 PSI. Uh, after deleting the vacuum pump and it didn't mess with the ECU at all. Uh, that's pretty common. Not not to say it's not going to happen, but I have seen it in some trucks where it just, you don't get that D rate. So going forward, after you delete the vacuum pump, you've got your manual wastegate controller and you've made it so the ECU isn't going to get affected. What's the next thing that kind of issue that you'll run in, into when putting more boost to your 6.5. The factory turbos were not meant for high PSI. 
factory GM5 or 3 or any one of them. They weren't meant for anything realistically over 13 PSI. And what that will cause is premature detonation or wear of your turbo. I'm going to take my intake off and show you exactly what overboosting or throwing more than 13 PSI will do to these turbos. I've said it in the past that my turbo is incredibly bad. I am basically limping this thing along until I can tear this truck apart. And if you're interested, I'll get into that uh, a little later in the video uh, as to why I haven't torn it apart yet, if y'all are interested. Um, but I will show you exactly how bad my turbo is in its current state. These turbos... Seriously, if you're thinking about putting any more than 13 to 15 PSI out of the factory turbo, just go ahead and get a different turbo, especially if you plan on doing that. What can happen if a turbo decides to wear out, if you prolong it for any amount of time without just limping it along? If you throw 22 PSI to it like I have, learn from my experience. I did that as I wanted more power and I didn't care about this turbo. And uh, I trust myself in the engine enough to get me until I uh, do what I want to with it. Just go ahead and get like an HX35, an HX40, a Super 54, Super 60. Any one of those turbos will work. Uh, I believe it's a T3 flange if you decide to go with a different turbo and you want to match something up. Uh, T3 is the relation to where the turbo bolts up to the passenger side manifold. Uh, that I believe is the correct flange size. There are different flange sizes so make sure when you go turbo shopping to kind of look out for that. Premature turbo wear or detonation is never good and what it can do is throw shards of aluminum into the intake and eventually those aluminum pieces will have to go through your valves in the head and what could potentially happen is that a piece of aluminum gets jammed in between the valve and the valve seat and that will cause for low or no compression on that cylinder um, and then at that point you need new heads or at least your heads refreshed or uh, at least your valves and valve seats cut so don't run it over about 13 15 psi if you're going to stay in the factory turbo just the turbo um, just keep that in mind. Okay, so now that you've eliminated your vacuum pump, got a better turbo, fooled the ECU in some way, shape, or form if you have to, what is the next thing to worry about? And you still want to put more boost to it. Your head gaskets. <laughs> Once you start putting gobs of boost to this thing, and it realistically if you're going to run over 15 to 18 psi you need to consider doing head studs these head gaskets were known for blowing even on factory configuration whether somebody didn't torque the heads down properly or they overheated the engine or any of those factors you need to consider doing head studs it will allow you to run those higher boost numbers with those other contributing parts. Um, I've seen them go as high as uh, 40 PSI on head studs and of course they've done a couple other mods to it in order to protect it. But uh, the 6.5 can handle more boost. I've seen it happen time and time again with built 6.5s. They can handle the boost. You need to do head studs at the very least. Also a harmonic balancer and a uh, crankshaft pulley to prevent the crank from breaking. But um, 
the head gaskets were known for going in these things just being stock. So I would very, very recommend if you're going to put any amount of boost to it, head studs, or you're going to lift the heads and you'll be tearing into the motor. And that isn't the funnest weekend project. Um, I've recently done <laughs> two trucks with head gaskets and uh, doing that job back to back even though it's on different trucks is kind of repetitive and annoying uh, both of them were different issues but nevertheless go with head studs and go with a good quality set of head gaskets um, I'm not going to tell you which head gaskets to use I'll let you do your research and uh, make your assessments as you wish on which head gaskets you should go with but head studs please put head studs in it you're gonna be doing head gaskets anyways if you don't so you've got a couple different ways to check if you have a good turbo and I have a factory GM3 here to kind of go over uh, see some of the things of course that if you're buying used turbo you may want to go through or if you buy a Chinese turbo and you're worried about uh, you just put it on you ran it and it doesn't seem to run right couple things to check so main thing is shaft play you have up and down play and you also have in and out play if the turbo has no in and out play or no uh, up and down play you're good what happens when you have uh, up and down play number one the seals on on the inside of the turbo front and back that seal the rod of the turbo will go out and then this turbo will start to leak oil if it gets too bad what happens is oil will get into the intake go through your intake manifold and potentially your engine could run away um, a runaway is never any good uh, of course oil leaks are never good in general um, you know you could potentially run your truck out of oil and six fives leak I don't care who you are uh, I don't care how well you take care of your six five engine it's gonna leak it's, it's just a leaky engine um, unless you absolutely go through the entire engine reseal everything it's basically a brand new engine uh, eventually it's it's just gonna leak um, you don't want it leaking anymore especially consuming uh, any more oil than what it's already leaking whether it be a front main seal rear main seal uh, see turbo drain pipe or, or uh, you're getting some oil up through the CDR you don't want any oil consumption uh, you don't particularly want any oil getting in the intake gumming things up especially you guys that have the EGR trucks the half ton trucks with the EGR valve on the top of the intake you don't want that stuff gumming up your valves or anything like that so that's one thing that can go bad another thing with the up and down and the uh, in and out play with that seal going bad of course it's eating up the bearings inside and once the bearings go bad your turbo is definitely junk or at least the bearings are and what will happen is these blades are going to start rubbing onto the housings whether it be the exhaust housing or the compressor housing of the turbo um, that's where those shards of metal come into play and will get in between the valves and the seats and that is never any good take care of your turbos and don't over boost the factory turbos so now that we've kind of looked at a moderately decent uh, GM3 I will show you a whooped <laughs> GM5 uh, let me get the intake off and uh, I'll show you guys here in a sec. All right, so some of you are absolutely going to crucify me in the comments. Uh, not to toot my horn, horn or anything, but I, I've heard a lot of people say that I'm one of the more popular 6.5 guys on YouTube. And 
everybody likes my truck for whatever reason and uh, man it's perfect it's awesome my truck is not perfect by any means and uh, I have plans to completely redo it in the future uh, one of the things that is not perfect is my turbo and you know I, I know there are worse turbos out there and uh, you know it, it's not the worst turbo in the world or anything like that but this is still damage and it's good to uh, show y'all especially you new guys what to look out for when buying a 6.5 checking the turbos and stuff like that but uh <laughs> don't kill me too bad in the comments I have been running this turbo like this for quite some time I would say a year and a half oh no <laughs> and uh just progressively letting it get worse so let's see here is my little gm5 turbo and it doesn't look bad on the face until you really look at it if you look at the top there's a gap between my fingernail and the compressor housing if you look at the bottom there is no gap if you look really closely at the bottom blade, you can see that little little lip right there where my shadow is, where uh, the blade has actually gotten so hot <laughs> and has been rubbing on the uh, compressor housing that it has warped the blade. Now, as far as play goes, see if I can hold my camera steady let me see yeah that's a bad turbo so that is an obnoxious amount of up and down play um, let me see if I can get some fight scripts actually Okay, I got a pair of vice grips here. See that side to side play and see that very, that uh, in, uh, turbine tooth right there on the uh, right side. Watch. See that gap? Ah, <laughs> oh, shit snacks. It's one of those things that I'm not necessarily proud of, but I'm just like everybody else, man. I'm as transparent and honest with you guys as possible. I've been telling y'all uh, throughout the videos that my turbo has just been getting worse and is bad, and I have yet to do anything to correct the issue. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's what a bad turbo looks like. Those bearings are shot, and... Obviously the blades of the turbine wheel are, uh, or the compressor wheel are rubbing against the housing. So <laughs> definitely check out your turbo the next time you do a PM or preventative maintenance or an oil change or something like that. I want to know in the comments what is the worst play. Now not, not completely come apart or destroyed or anything what is the worst amount of play that you have ever seen on a 6.5 turbo or any turbo for that matter i want to know um <laughs> one of the ones that i saw and it wasn't necessarily uh the turbo's fault but uh something had gotten in between <laughs> the intake uh, maybe, I think the guy ran it without uh, an air filter. And something got into the turbo and bent, <laughs> completely bent the uh, rod, or uh, the shaft of the turbo. And it had warped the rod, so it was just kind of going around in a circle like that. And half the blades <laughs> weren't even remotely touching. Um, <laughs> or half the blades weren't... Uh, you could obviously tell that the it no wasn't right. So that's the worst one I've ever seen. Uh, that was still kind of building boost. But uh, let me know in the comments below. So 
now that you've made it to the end of the video, uh, video, first of all, thank you. Uh, I greatly appreciate you guys taking the time to watch my videos. Secondly, why I have been making more four-wheeler stuff than 6.5 stuff, uh, especially how I said that I was going to tear my truck apart and uh, rebuild it from the ground up. One of the things is I live in a neighborhood... Uh, it's a very friendly neighborhood, but, uh, recently I had, well, a couple months ago, before I bought the four-wheelers, uh, one of the kids up the street had broken into my shed, um, and I don't have a garage, so I'm not going to tear my truck apart in the driveway where I don't have a garage, and somebody just run off with whatever part they want trying to sell it on ebay or run off with a tool that i accidentally left out or anything like that the kid actually stole my chainsaw my push mower and my weed whacker um and i was really upset but uh it's just one of those things um it's really unfortunate people can't just leave well enough alone and it gets my mind racing so now my shed is a little more reinforced nobody's gonna break in unless they actually actually try um, and uh, I don't want to tear my truck apart in my driveway where that potentially could happen again um, so as far as tearing my truck goes or uh, tearing my truck apart goes I'm gonna hold off until I have a place or I can build a garage a place that already has a garage or I can build a garage here in order to completely rip it apart. Um, also with the 6.5 videos, uh, of course, I get super excited about new things that I get all the time and I was incredibly excited about the Warrior and now I'm getting more excited about the Weiss Wolverine. Um, not that I I'm not gonna do six five content. I am still going to do six five content for y'all. Uh, I ask you in the comments to leave any questions, comments, concerns, or video ideas that you would like me to make, and I mean that wholeheartedly. Even if it's you consider it maybe a dumb question, I don't see dumb questions. I see that as if you want me to make a video for you, whether it be the interior of my truck or do a whole walk around of just my truck and the wife's truck, do the whole build sheet, prices that I've spent on it, everything like that. Or if you want to see more Warrior or more ATV stuff, um, please just let me know. I will make that video for y'all. Uh, I have a couple video ideas in mind that I plan on making regardless, but if y'all want to see anything specific or me to touch on a topic like the uh, difference between a DS4 and a DB2 injection pump, or uh, maybe how would I convert my uh, electronic injection pump over to a manual injection pump, stuff like that. I would genuinely like to make those videos for y'all if you are interested, so please let me know in the comments below and I will be sure to do so. Another reason why I haven't yet torn my truck apart is uh, it's a crew cab and my wife's is an extended cab and it's super convenient to throw the girls, my two dogs, in the back seat of the truck if we want to go somewhere. It's a little tight in that extended cab where it is not a third door. Also, I may be having a new family member here in the near future. And until we get another crew cab or uh, a third vehicle or anything like that, I won't be ripping my truck apart. So, it's just the way that it is. Uh, this old girl is just going to have to keep going for a little while longer. So, I definitely have to do something about the turbo in the meantime. But, that's just another one of those reasons. So, so thank you guys so much for watching. Uh I greatly appreciate it and I greatly appreciate all the support. Um, again, any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comments section or get a hold of me on Facebook. I'll leave those links in the description below. Also, if y'all are interested in any IDI Legends merch, you want to represent uh, our 
little business or if you want some six five six two seven three six nine merch uh and parts i have been selling some six five parts uh off my nine two nine block um and i have access to several other uh six five motors uh, if y'all are having a hard time getting a hold of any sort of used part uh let me know in the comments and or get a hold of me directly and i will try my damn just to find that part for you if i need to so thank you all so much for watching i'll catch you legends in the next one